Have you ever experienced the perils of trying to get an in-system chip connected to programming headers? It is daunting, fiddly, and just not fun. One elegant solution is called a pogo adapter, which allows you to program your microprocessor by simply touching your board. And today I will show you how to make your own. I will show you how to quickly make one of these, a pogo adapter. Very cool stuff. You have little pogo pins that can hook up to an SPI interface and program a chip, for example, in circuit. And today we're going to see how this little adapter that connects to your favorite programmer was made. So let's design our pogo adapter board. We need a few parts here. Uh, the first thing is a header. Um, I have 0.65 millimeter pogo sticks um, and I'm looking for a Miso Mosey header, which is somewhere up here. We have the tiny version, mini, mini, mini version. That's a really thickery um, to solder, uh, to make things easy. And I don't really need that miniature, miniature stuff. Uh, we take a normal header and uh, insert it in how to, into our schematic and goes down here they're labeled already um and the next thing we need is the solder pad so let's have a quick search for solder there should be different pads here and to make things nice and easy later on uh yeah why don't we use one of those nice and large solder pads um we need six of them so let's put them all together in here knick knock knick knock I have disabled, uh, I have disabled the snapping. Oh no, it's enabled, fantastic. So they go right in there. Click, click and click. And that's basically all we need here. Let's go over to our board view. Oh, there they are down here. And I'll zoom in there a bit and start taking these up. So let's put this here in the middle, um, rotate this around, that looks better. And then we're just gonna ah, put this in the middle, right here. Well, let's make our grid a little bit tinier, 0 0.5 in that way. Yes, this looks better, but it gives you an idea just how small this is going to be. Um, we don't need much space around this. Uh, the traces, my machine manages around point, 0 0.1. So we should have no problem putting these in. Um, these should go, yes, nice and close together. Um, yes, like this. And then we have one more that needs to come up here and go in there. So let's have a quick look. Well, that doesn't look too bad. Um, that seems like it's enough spacing as well. Um, not quite super symmetric, but acceptable. Let's turn all of these off. Um, really don't need any annotations here. There we are. And let's jump to our dimension layer so that our PCP plugin can make the Make the board nice and easily. And we go down here, close the whole thing like that. And then we can actually move these around a bit. Oops, not like that. Down, straight down. There we go. Now make this a bit small. Yes, this should work. Um, so yeah, here's our board. And now all we need to do is out route. Um, obviously we, well, I've done a board here before for test purposes earlier. So that's all set. There's no bottom layer, just the top layer. And what we can actually do, because we do have some space, make the width a bit bigger, 2.54. Oh, of course we need to jump back to our top layer here. Knuck, knuck, and not to move everything, go back into our change width. 2.54, there we go, make them larger, 
There we go. All right. So that's done. Now we can go into our PCB code setup. I have a quick check. Um, these are my settings, my personal settings. I'm using a 0 0.1 etching tool. My minimum I set and I found to be perfect for my machine, my particular machine at 0 0.04. Maximum is going to be 0 0.48. Step size 0 0.04. We're going to uh, create our milling later on. Um, and uh, we're going to spot our drill holes. Uh, here's the machine settings for my particular machine. And we're just going to accept and make the board. And there we go. That's done. That looks good. We're going to have 12 passes here um, just to take uh, to take some of the copper away and make soldering easier and it also looks nicer with a particular board that I have here as a white uh, in the, the inside is white so it looks really really nice. Here we are with our file loaded into IO Sender. After installing our 0.1 millimeter 20 degree bit and connecting the ground to the board via my clamps we're going to run a zero for the Z axis. It's very easy in IO Sender. You just run it a couple of times, make sure the numbers don't change. So you don't have any faults in the measurement. So you don't break your bit. And when you're done with that, you go and load the dimensions of your um, of your file into the height map tool. The height map tool uh, defaults to five by five, five millimeter grids which I find even for the small project more than enough. I personally do them all the time. It is entirely up to you whether you want to do them. I find them very, very helpful, especially with these tiny, tiny uh, tipped bits. Um, 20 degrees is not much, but if I'm off by 0 0.05 millimeters, uh, because the board is distorted or torsioned, then uh, I could cut into traces where I don't want to. So it's important to, to run that height map. We apply it and then we get back to our main window and set our RPM. Uh, my spindle is a 400 watt, 48 volt, 12,000 RPM spindle. And I usually run them for these boards at around 70%, which equal, equals 700 here in the program. Then we're going to start it, run it clockwise and get going, get milling. The board is ready, 12 passes, 5 minutes 55 seconds, and the next thing we're going to do is zero in our drill bit, 0 0.7 millimeters. My pogo pins are 0 0.65 millimeters, it makes them fit in there just loose enough so I can move them around and don't have to press fit them and I can solder them. So uh, we've zeroed the drill and now let's get drilling. So here is the board as it just came out of the mill. You can see there's a little bit of a of a piece of copper stuck there, some cusping. Uh, the edges are obviously not perfect yet. And what I like to do is I like to clean this up with um, a little bit of 1000 uh, wet sandpaper without making this, this wet. Just go over this. Um, 
go over this a few times, from back, left, right, some circling, and this just takes off any of those deformities on the side of the traces to make this visually pleasing, actually. Um, sandpaper clogs up quite quickly, but it's just crops that I keep around for exactly this kind of purpose. And there we are. And that's it. And then what I have is uh, I kept one of those really old uh, bobbly bits here um, for my hand drill, for my hand, uh, what is this called? Uh, one of those little things. Uh, they're called a uh, Bohrschleifer. Um, and I basically just put this here. Uh, I have the, the green cheap paste that came with it. Uh, very disgusting stuff. Uh, we turn this on. Excuse the noise here. I hope this works. Yes, should be. Oh, there we go. And here for just a second. A bit of green. Gets a bit green. And go over this. Like so. And we're just shining this up a bit. And that's all we need regarding this cool thing. I'll show you the effect right away under the microscope. It is quite Stunning. Tiny bit of alcohol. Wash the rest of the the green goo off. And that should be it. And now let's have a quick look what this turned into. Oh ha. Well that looks better. I would say. So the next thing we need to do is get our tiny little pogo pins in there. Um, these I've used before, that's why they have a tiny little bit of silver there in the back um, and they should still fit perfectly well inside of our holes. Yes, fantastic. So the first thing we're going to do is apply a tiny bit of flux to the top of our board to get the best possible solder adhesion. So, let's have a look here. Right into the bottom there. It's not that easy here eh, to hit those tiny little holes. And there we see them poke through. Next one, right next to that, and another one, there we are. So, and they're all through, quick look at the focus here, so that everything is properly focused. Hope so. Yes. And now all we need to do is get these aligned so that they're all the same length. And same angle. There we go. Takes a little bit of thickering until there are nice and straight and all the exact same length and we can start soldering touch the side of the pin ideally just the pad so stuff heats up a bit add a little bit of solder and let that flow in very quick and very And that is one row done. And here we go for the next three. And 
And that's that. Now just a little bit of a cleanup and we're ready to go. Yes, this looks neat. And then on the bottom we have a rather dirty board that needs a bit of cleanup as well. Fantastic. There we go. So let's have a quick look at the top here under the microscope. And here is the cut and cleaned up board ready to be measured. And then we can start generating our little tiny enclosure. And here it is, already printed, 15 minutes later, and we have ourselves a tiny little mini enclosure um, for our pogo board. So, let's see if this indeed fits. Seems promising for now. A little bit of pressure. And I made this extra extra tight. <laughs> Let's see if this works. There it is. Our pogo pins on the bottom, our board at the top. 